It's time again for the Science Bowl. Zoo Parade for Five. What big teeth the hippo has are actually a pair of these. Science Potpourri for 10. Would a snake most likely eat every day? Every week, Dateline Science for 10. Why are some elephants wearing necklaces these days? Green things for 15. And now, here's your host, Mr. Z himself, Dave Zarin. Thank you, and welcome to the Science Bowl. Special edition today, the two teams you're about to meet have won once previously, and today's winner will become the second of the three semifinalists in this year's middle school competition. For those of you not familiar with our show, this is our 35th year of competition, testing science literacy among middle and elementary school students here in the Prince George's County Public Schools. And uh, we're a little different, of course, because of the pandemic, all of our players are in their homes. I'm here in the studio in Bonnie Johns, and uh, we have no buzzers, but we will be giving the team the two teams, 18 questions apiece, different questions of equal difficulty, and the team that's ahead at the end will be our second semifinalist, joining Martin Luther King Jr. Middle School. We start our teams out with 50 points, no penalties for incorrect answers, but one of the things we have preserved in this Zoomed edition of Science Bowl is the ability to have six categories that have not changed at all. Here they are. Okay, Mr. Z, here's today's categories. Green Things, questions about plants and all things green and growing. Zoo Parade, a Noah's Ark of questions about animals. Body Systems, we'll see how much you know about yourself, about things like breathing and growing and digesting your food. Let's get physical. Questions that test your knowledge of physics and chemistry, earth science and space science. Then there's Science Potpourri. Here's a grab bag of science questions. Everything from air pollution to the kitchen zinc. And finally, Dateline Science. We'll ask you about science history and science in the news. All right, it's time now to meet the first of our two teams. Our contestants today are Thomas Johnson Middle School and Robert Goddard Montessori. So Robert Goddard will be playing first. We go alphabetically and our team members are Braden. Braden waved everybody at home if you would please young man. And Mason who is our captain. Mason, give it a nice wave. And Nathaniel also, he's out there ready and raring to go. Guys, you did so well last time. Good luck to you this time. And uh, let's begin. Again, nine questions, three from the categories of green things, zoo parade, and body systems. Here is your green things question for five points. While the number of petals on a flower shows it can count, <laughs> a plant's mathematical ability is limited. They can't figure out, for instance, that three is the square what of nine. Right. Root, that's it. All right, that's your green thing. Open her up. Five points. They don't know that three is the square root of nine. Fifteen points. There are many kinds of oak trees, but the one called the live oak, unlike other oaks, keeps its leaves year-round and is thus an evergreen. Not one of these kinds of trees that shed their leaves each year. Deciduous. Deciduous. Deciduous, yes, and gentlemen. I heard that in triplicate, absolutely right. Here's a multiple choice question for you for 25 points in green things. Well, the cherry tree George Washington is said to have chopped down was a fruiting tree. The cherry trees around the tidal basin are not fruiting trees. Are they decorative, sterile, or ornamental trees? I believe it's ornamental. Yeah, I think so. Are you all in agreement right? with that? Yeah. Yeah. Ornamental is correct, indeed. Good. We move into the zoo. For five points, here's your zoo parade question. It's to rid its bodies of excess salt and not remorse over eating a wildebeest that causes one of these reptiles to shed tears. Crocodiles. Crocodiles. Crocodile tears, that's right. Yeah, they, they have no feelings whatsoever. They just want lunch. Next. We have a visual question for you for Zoo Parade for 15. Cryptobiotic animals, barely alive as eggs in very dry conditions, will spring to life when water appears, like these crustaceans known to pet-loving kids as sea monkeys. What are they in actuality? I believe they're called triops. Uh, yeah, I'll go with Say it again, please, Mason. Triops? T-R-I-O-P-S? Or maybe, no, wait, no, is it krill? 
Should we go with Daniel, Krill? Do you want to add anything to this? Brian, what do you think? Should we go with Krill or Triops? I'm not sure. I don't know. I, I don't know. All right, you know what? Actually, Kr actually, the correct answer is brine shrimp. They oh, are brine right. shrimp. Smart. Here's a 25-point question for you gentlemen in Zoo Parade. The pronghorn antelope, North America's fastest animal, can easily outrun any current predator. But in another geological period, Pronghorn really needed speed to escape what spotted cat that once lived here? Uh, leopard. No, it's cheetah. No, cheetah, sorry. It's cheetah. God. Cheetah, absolutely right. At one time, North America did have cheetahs. Imagine that. Here's a body system question for you. Last three questions before we go to our first break. Anatomically known as the axilla, A-X-I-L-L-A, -L -L -A, this part of your body, just beneath your shoulder, is a good place to take your temperature, but it often smells pretty bad. Armpit. Armpit. Your armpit. That's right. What else, right? Yeah. All right, for 15 points. For 15 points in body. The phrase, gird your loins, is to prepare yourself for something difficult. It refers to the area, your loins, the area of your lower back that is composed of a group of bones known as this kind of girdle. That would be the pelvic girdle, the pelvic girdle, sometimes just known as the pelvis, the ilium, the ischium, and the pubis bones. For 25 points under body systems, last question before we break. If your doctor suggests that you use a topical analgesic, a topical analgesic, would you swallow it to fall asleep, apply it to your skin to prevent infection, or rub it on your back to relieve pain? Nathan, Again, your choice is uh, a topical uh, analgesic. Swallow it to follow asleep, apply it to the skin to prevent infection, rub it on your back to relieve pain. I think it's pain. I think it's pain. Yeah, that sounds That's pain. pain. Absolute pain and analgesic go together, rub on to relieve pain. And that gives you 25 points there, guys. Nicely done. And that means at the end of this first round here, Robert Goddard, you have 155 points. Terrific job. Now let's meet the team from Thomas Johnson. And we welcome Demensa back. Demensa waved, waved everybody, if you would, please. And the captain of the team is Lucy. Hey, Lucy. Nice to have you back again. And Bao is out there. Young man, waved everybody. Good to have you all with us. All right, if you're ready, we'll start our questions. Again, we have three questions in green things. Here is your green things question worth five points. On the first day of Christmas, my true love gave to me a partridge in a what? Uh, make sure you're unmuted there. Lucy, I see you moving your lips, but I don't hear you. Unmute yourselves. Again, on the first day of Christmas, my true love gave to me a partridge in a what, what? A pear tree. Yeah, pear tree. I was worried about you guys. I thought, have they never heard Christmas carols? All right, we go on. 15 points. The 390-year-old white pine tree that survived the bombing of Hiroshima in World War II is now at what Washington, D.C. park that is a showcase for trees. It is known as the National what? If you drive in New York Avenue on Route 50, it's on your left. It's called the National Arboretum. An arboretum is a place where you see trees. They even have little bonsai trees there that are hundreds of years old. Green things for 25 points is a visual. Salicylic acid, which is an ingredient in the pain reliever aspirin. If you've ever taken an aspirin for pain, it contains something called salicylic acid. That acid comes from these W-initialed trees, some of which like this one, appeared to be crying. They're called weeping what? Willows. Willow, that's it, good. Got yourself 25 points. I'm happy about that. All right, let's go into the zoo. Here we go, Thomas Johnson for five points. Multiple choice question. You would be correct in saying that the fictitious characters from literature, Napoleon, Snowball, Wilbur, and Babe, all belong to the equine, feline or porcine hall of fame if you're readers you've probably come across napoleon and snowball you've read about wilbur if you've been to the movies you've seen babe 
They all belong to the equine, the feline, or the porcine Hall of Fame. What do you think? Why so? You are the, you're the correct answer, but why porcine, Lucy? Well, I mean, Wilbur is from Charlotte's Web, is he not? And if I remember, Wilbur is a pig, and porcine kind of just reminds me of pork, which then leads me back to pig. That's beautiful. That, that's exactly the connections I hoped you would make. In the book called Animal Farm, Napoleon and Snowball were kind of the nasty dictators. And then Wilbur, yes, we know about Wilbur in, in literature, and Babe is, uh, you know, the talking pig from the movie. So poor son is right. Thank you, Lucy. Here's your 15-point question in Zoo. Copying is not recommended if you're taking a test. Don't get caught copying. But in nature, it can save your life. Witness the delicious Viceroy butterfly that evolved to look like the nasty-tasting monarch butterfly. That trick is not camouflage. No, it's this. When you're trying to look like something else. Camouflage? Not camouflage. No, I just said disguise. it's not camouflage. It's something it's disguise. else. Disguise. Disguise. It's not really disguise. You know what it is? It's mimicry. They're mimicking each other. They're aping each other, mimicry. Good try. Try your 25 point question in Zoo Parade. Horseshoe crab blood. Maybe you've seen horseshoe crabs at the shore. They look like these big helmets with a tail. Mm -hmm. Their blood, which is used to test new drugs for the presence of toxins, they're very important in medicine. Their blood is this color. It's not red. Because of the presence of hemocyanin instead of hemoglobin, Hemocyanin, C Y A N I N, horseshoe crab blood is what color? Blue. Blue. Thank you. Absolutely right. Good answer there, Bow. 25 points. Let's go to the body system. For giving mankind fire, Zeus chained Prometheus to a rock and had an eagle fly down, this is nasty, and repeatedly peck out what large internal organ from Prometheus, the only one in the human body that can regenerate itself. So each day it would grow back, and the eagle would come back again and eat it again. What a terrible punishment. What organ is it? Liver. Liver. Good. The only one we can regenerate. That's why people can give liver transplants. You can donate part of your liver and yours will grow back, and that small piece will grow into a whole liver in the recipient. It's just amazing that that can happen. All right, guys, you're doing well. Body systems for 15 points. Here in this local Palmer Park community is an athlete by the name of Sugar Ray Leonard. You don't remember him, but at one time in the Olympics, he won a gold medal for boxing. He is a local celebrity. He suffered a serious injury, though, in the ring that threatened his vision when this photosensitive layer at the back of the eye was a detached when he got punched in the face. Could it be the retina? Thank you, Demensa. It is indeed the retina. A detached retina is very, very serious, can lead to permanent blindness. Good answer. All right, last question for you before we take our break. This large muscle that is much prized by singers can, if hit hard enough, cause the wind to be knocked out of you. And if someone is doing the Heimlich maneuver because food is stuck in your throat, they put their fists around your abdomen and pull on this muscle. You're all thinking. Come on, guys, you know this one called the diaphragm, the diaphragm muscle. It's one that actually helps you breathe, moves your lungs in and out like a bellows. Well, that you didn't get diaphragm, but you still had a super round. You have 130 points as we hit the halfway point. Good job, everybody. Welcome back, everyone. You know, if you've been watching our show this year, and we've only had a few shows, and over the past couple of years, you would have met these three outstanding gentlemen. Uh, one of them was an alternate before, but he's now front and center and doing a terrific job. And let's tell you about all of them. If you're meeting them for the very first time, let's go to the captain. And Mason, uh, I always like to ask what you like best about your schools. And uh, you told me something very nice last time. Tell people at home what it is about 
Robert Goddard that you especially like that makes it different? Uh, yeah, I like that we get to have more like time with the teachers where we can talk to them one on one instead of just having to like be in the middle of class. So if there's something that you're like embarrassed about, then you can talk to the teacher alone instead of having mm -hmm. to do it in front of the whole class. Boy, that's so important. And you know, uh, and teachers are real people too. And you know, you discover that after a while that it, they're not just up there to get you to understand what photosynthesis is or solve a quadratic, quadratic equation. They're there to help you with the, all the many problems that come along with growing up in life. And uh, that's what they're there for. They're great mentors and they're great listeners. Uh, you told me before you wanted to be a chef and that you like to make burgers. Yeah, Let me I ask do. You, do you, yeah, do you bake at all? I do some baking, but I'm not as good as baking as I am at other kinds of cooking. Yeah, so as a professional chef, can you see yourself doing something like Emeril in one of those TV shows where you cook for people? Maybe. Yeah, pretty lucrative stuff, too. You got to get good because, yeah. it's, you know, you, if someone told me once, a chef told me once, Mason, you eat with your eyes. Yeah. So if something doesn't look good, you're just yeah, not going to eat it. It tastes good. <laughs> All right. You're playing the super game here today. Before I leave you, could you tell me, please, the name of your wonderful coach? Mr. Prey. Mr. Prey is out there, and she is so proud of you guys. And uh, Miss Womack is the principal of your school there. And I think you had a couple alternates. Yes, uh, Ella and Grayson. Ella and Grayson, right? yeah. All right, we'll bring them out in just a few moments' time. All right, let's talk to your teammates there. Let's go to Braden. Braden, when we talked last time, you were telling me that you aspired to be an engineer because you're good with your hands and you're good with figures and all. Uh, tell me, have you put some things together? When did you first get an inkling that, hey, I'm pretty good at mechanical things? Well, I have built a couple things before, a couple um, odd things that I just threw together from parts I'd laying around the house. But my dad and I used to take apart old electronics and stuff, and we never yes. did anything with them. But one time I decided to play around with the pieces we got and managed to make something. Absolutely right. Yes. And you're kind of like, what is it, MacGyver, who can throw things together and make things work. You know, you're, uh, you can improvise things. Uh, tell me about, uh, I like those shirts there, the rockets, uh, in tribute to Robert Goddard, the father of modern rocketry. What do you like to do in your spare time? Um, quite a few things. Of course, I like to play video games. I'm part yeah. of a baseball team, which is fun. It lets me get outside and get exercise. And I also play piano and violin. Wow, you're doing everything. What position do you play on the baseball team? Outfield, mainly. Outfield, very good. You're playing a good game here, young man. Keep it up. Let's talk to Nathaniel. Nathaniel, uh, I have to ask you, you're just whip smart. Uh, I know you told me last time how this distance learning really fits your yeah. game because you don't have to get on a bus every day. You know, the, the, the stress is much reduced. Uh, how do you come by all your science knowledge? Because you're very knowledgeable. Ah. I mostly just pick it up from videos on YouTube, occasionally browsing the news, so I keep up to date. Absolutely, yeah. yes. Uh, that's the thing about the internet. You're, you're never finished with it. It's always there. It's always evolving and changing, and uh, there's no excuse really for uh, not being aware. It's almost a surfeit of information. There's almost too much out there. And what did you tell me that you want to do when you get older? I want to be a graphic designer, or a 3D model, or maybe an architect or engineer. So yeah, we were talking about that last time. You'd be a good one. You have a lot of discipline. All right, gentlemen, let's get back into our game. I have nine more questions for you from Let's Get Physical, Science, Popery, and Dateline. Currently, you have 155 points. Let's see if you can add to that tally. Here's your physical question for five. While it doesn't sound too appetizing, some people put rusty nails in their molasses to increase the amount of this important mineral in their diet. Iron. 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 Iron, yes. Imagine that. You know, just don't stick it under your skin because you're risking tetanus. Here's your 15-point question in physical. There'll be three parts to the answer. Since Pluto was kicked out of the planetary family, I'm still not over that, there are now just three planets that share a name with a chemical element. What three planets still have a chemical element named for them? Can you give me all three? Put your three heads together, see if you can get all three, and earn yourself okay, so 15 Neptune points. Neptune and Uranus. Yeah, Neptune Mercury. and Uranus. What's the third think, one, guys? Mercury. I think Saturn. Mercury. Oh, no, yeah, it's Mercury. Yeah. Neptune, Uranus, and Mercury. You got them all, guys. Super job. For 25 points in physical. Speaking of planets, astronomers have found a chemical called phosphine. It's actually a poisonous gas that may have been produced by something alive 
in the clouds surrounding this planet, the least hospitable and the hottest in our solar system. Venus. It's Venus. It is Venus, absolutely right. It is just hellishly hot up there, but somehow up in the clouds, they think that life is existing. Let's go to potpourri for five points. While COVID-19 tests involve swabbing the nose or throat to retrieve some RNA, getting DNA samples to determine your genealogy, your family tree, are recovered from swabbing this area of your body. Uh, mouth? We'll accept that. Yes, your mouth, your cheek. Good. Go to the 15-point question in potpourri. Brugger's disease, it's spelled B-R-U-E-G-E-R apostrophe S. Brugger's disease, almost always caused by smoking, restricts, restricts blood flow to the extremities and often results in fingers and toes having to be surgically removed. Awful. That surgical procedure of removing fingers and toes is known as this. Amputation. Amputation is correct, yes. Here's a visual question for you for 25 points in potpourri. That crows can, like this one in Aesop's fable, drop pebbles into a pitcher to get the water at the bottom to rise to the top, shows an understanding of the physics of water what? A D initial term, D is in David. An understanding of the physics of water what? Displacement. Displacement is what I heard from Braden, and that is absolutely correct. Our engineer came through. 25 points. All right, guys, three more questions for you in Dateline for five points. Who would ever have thought this most famous American epidemiologist would become a rock star during the COVID crisis? Is it, um, is it Dr. Fauci? I don't know. It is Dr. Fauci, is Dr. absolutely Fauci. right. Yeah, they have bobblehead dolls now of oh. him. You know, so I mean, he is a I mean, rock he does star. An There's iconic songs face. about him. He is, absolutely. All right, you got your five points. Here's 15 points in Dateline. Instead of landing at the moon's equator, as NASA did in 1969, a return visit in 2024 will target the south pole of the moon, where water is found in the form of ice, tantalizing. That water can make life possible, but also the hydrogen and the oxygen in the water can be used to make this so that future space exploration is possible. Oxygen. oxygen. It's not a multiple choice. The hydrogen and oxygen in water can be used to make this so that future space exploration is possible. Fuel. Fuel is correct, yes. Liquid oxygen and liquid hydrogen, perfect. Last question for you for 25 points in Dateline. It was in 1932 that Ernest Rutherford discovered that a proton splitting a lithium atom could release a tremendous amount of energy through this process. Atomic fission. You got that right for 25 points, perfect. Terrific round there for Robert Goddard. And with that answer with the fission, Guys, you go to 290 points. That's your final tally for the game. Tremendous work. And before we ask any questions, the final questions of Thomas Johnson, let's tell you a little bit about each of these young players here. All terrific students, all have prepared so well for today's game. That's why they won their first game, and they're here today competing for a chance to be a semifinalist. Let's find out about the captain, and that would be Lucy. Lucy, I love how you parse that answer about the pig and the poor sign and Wilbur. That's what Science Bowl is all about. It's like STEAM, you know, science, technology, engineering, arts, and math. You put them all together. You're a poster child for STEAM. Tell us a little bit about Thank yourself, you. Lucy. Who, you're welcome. Tell me who your coach is. Our coach is Miss Yavez. Yes, and she is wonderful. Uh, she wasn't able to join us this morning, and she was so concerned, and she emailed me right away. She said, tell me what happened. And I know she's uh, very proud of you guys. Uh, who's the principal at your school? Mr. Owens. Mr. Owens, indeed. He, I'm sure he is equally proud of you. And did you have any alternates on your team, Lucy? Yes, we did. Darwin. Darwin, and he will be out in just a few months. Darwin is often the answer to our science questions here, Charles Darwin and evolution. Uh, uh, you were sharing with me earlier some of the things that you like to do in your spare time. Would you tell us again? Some of the things that I could do in my spare time is probably listen to music, go outside, read a book maybe, and just, I don't know, hang around, mosey around. That's it. 
just hang, you know, don't put too much pressure on yourself. This pandemic is pressure enough, so you have to take care of yourself. You do. You have to preserve your, your mental health and, every, and your physical health as well. And someday you're going to do what, you think? I want to major in Metrotronics Engineering. And tell people what that means, Metronics. Well, it's kind of like, to put it lightly, it's kind of like a branch of electrical engineering and mechanical engineering. So you develop stuff like gadgets. Yeah, we all love gadgets too. You know, kitchen gadgets, all kinds of gadgets. Uh, that's a great aspiration. I know you're going to be successful because you've done so well here. Let's meet your colleagues. Let's find out about Demensa. Demensa, you were telling me last time what a great reader you are. And that as you go through, you note words that you're not sure of and you check them out and you're building your vocabulary one word at a time. And uh, that's it. Have you always done that or when did you start that? Because that's a great practice. Well, I started doing that ever since I came to the United States. I, would, I wouldn't exactly understand most of the stuff, the English stuff. So I would try to write down some words that I don't understand and then try to do some research later and write down the definitions so I can like remember later. Can I ask uh, where you're from and what your native language is? Huh? Where did you say you were from? Oh, God, uh, Ivory Coast. Ivory Coast, uh, Cote d'Ivoire. So yes. uh, uh, you, you speak French? Yeah. Yeah, so yeah, uh, and learning English. I know I tried to learn French, I went the other way. I was very unsuccessful. Uh, I used to live in Africa, I lived in Kenya on the other coast former British colony, so uh, I learned to speak Swahili, which is the lingua franca there, but uh, it's difficult. You're, you're doing a masterful job here. Tell me what you hope to do someday. Um, I hope to major in information technology one day. Yeah, that was the, at the suggestion of your father. I remember you telling me he wants to position you for the best possible job. He wants you to be successful in life. I know you will be. And young man Bao is with us, young man who comes to us from Vietnam originally. And when you came here, uh, how was your command of English, Bao? It was uh, kind of okay. And um, I, I was able to say like basic words, not too complicated words. I, I had a hard time communicating with other people. And uh, there's nothing like immersion. It's like when you, if you can't swim, if someone throws you into deep water, somehow you learn to move and save yourself. And when you can't speak a language, sometimes if you're totally immersed in it, you gradually pick it up. But uh, here I am using a lot of big words in these science questions, and I'm glad you're indulging me and you're, you're doing a great job figuring out what it is I'm asking. What do you hope to do someday, young man? Become an informatic technology. That's wonderful. And uh, what do you do in your spare time? In my spare time, I play with my friends and sometimes go on YouTube and just learn how to code. Yeah, it's absolutely right. That's what you have to do. All right. It's always nice to find out a little bit about each of our players. You all have interesting backstories. You all have great futures, too. Let's get to the first three questions in your next category, and let's get physical. Here we go for five points. The only rock we human beings eat the one we often use as a condiment when we sit down to dinner, has the formula N-A-C-L. What is that substance? Sodium chloride. And we be know it better as what? A salt. Salt, absolutely right. It's a condiment. It's, it's considered a rock. It's also considered a mineral. It's the one we thank you, Bao. For 15 points under, let's get physical. While Titan, T-I-T-A-N, is Saturn's largest moon, Neptune's largest, and the only solar system moon that orbits in the opposite direction of its planet's rotation, has what similar sounding name to Titan, and was Ariel's father's name in Disney's movie, The Little Mermaid. Triton, Triton. Triton, absolutely right, King Triton because he carried a triton with three prongs. For 25 points, this is something that still amazes me. Physicists still can't completely explain why in a bowl of nuts, the biggest nuts, the Brazil nuts, always end up on top. 
Why doesn't gravity pull them down and raise the smaller ones up due to the... Why gravity doesn't pull them down and raise up the smaller ones may be due to these kinds of currents that we know cause heat to rise. What kind of currents do we call those that cause heat to rise? May also explain why those heavy nuts defy gravity. Electric current alter, electric current, alternating electric current, is that it? You're talking about AC or DC currents? Those are good uh, uh, observations. They're good guesses, hypotheses. Correct answer is convection, convection currents. Like when you boil water, you see it go and it comes up and it goes around like this. Those currents where heat rises explains why those nuts, we think, rise to the top. Let's go to the potpourri for five points. In these anxious pandemic times, dentists are treating more and more people who grind and clench their what? Teeth. Teeth, that's right, indeed. People who, that's why you should put a mouth guard in so you don't chip your teeth. For 15 points, thank you, Lucy. In potpourri, NASA's program to reach the moon in 2024 is named for Artemis, A-R-T-E-M-I-S. She is the twin sister of this Greek god whose name NASA used for its original moon missions. Also begins with the letter A. Who okay. is Artemis's twin brother? Apollo. Yeah, it is Apollo. Good answer. Let's go to Potpourri and show you a visual for this question. You're doing really well. Of all the plants on Earth, these protect more shorelines and produce more carbon sequestration than any other on Earth. Name these M initial trees that are found throughout the tropics and help to save beaches. Did someone say something? No, no ideas there? I'm sure they might be found along the coastline in Vietnam, certainly in Cote d'Ivoire. You would find these. They help to save the beaches. Those are known as mangrove trees, mangrove trees. Let's try Dateline for five points. This American statement, statesman, whose face is on the $100 bill, I don't know if you've ever had a $100 bill, but this man's face is on it. He is best known for a stove he invented. He invented bifocals. He invented a lightning rod because he flew a kite during an electrical storm. He also founded a major civilian hospital and medical school in the United States. Can you name that famous American? Benjamin Franklin. Yes, sir. All right, Val. Ben Franklin, it is. For 15 points. I know you've seen pictures of this guy and what he did. This Russian scientist famously trained dogs to salivate at the sound of a bell after the dogs learned to associate the bell with a meal of meat. What was his name? Famous Russian scientist. A conditioned reflex. His name was Pavlov. P-A-V-L-O-V. -V. So every time he fed the dogs, he would ring a bell, kept doing it, kept doing it. And eventually, when he would just ring the bell, the dogs would start to slobber because they associated the ringing of the bell with the meat. Here's the last question for you in the game. Dr. William Hewson, who you've never heard of before, who is known as the father of hematology, which is all about blood, he discovered that red blood cells are thinner at the center than they are at the edges. So like lenses that are exactly that same way, what shape do they have? The opposite of convex. Mensa, what are you saying? Invert. 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 That's a good try. The opposite of convex. It sounds almost like it. It's called concave. Concave, where it's thinner in the center and thicker at the edges. All right, that is the end of the round for Thomas Johnson and TJ. That takes your final score to 175 points. You did well today. We will be back, everyone, to announce the winner. Yes, the second of our semifinalists in the middle school competition. Don't go away. And welcome back, everyone. Hope you enjoyed today's game. It was uh, extraordinary. So many correct answers to what we consider very difficult questions. And these students did not let us down. They proved that they are as good as advertised. Experience made a difference. And the fact that they have played this game before showed 
and we're so proud of all of them. And our final tally today is Thomas Johnson 175, Robert Goddard 290. Robert Goddard, congratulations. You are our second semifinalist along with Martin Luther King. Yes, give yourselves a hand. Everybody should clap for Robert Goddard for doing an extraordinary job today. And we also want to clap for Thomas Johnson. Thomas Johnson, you have not played our game that much. You came close today. You gave it your all, and you just did an exceptional job as well. And we have some alternates out there. Ella is here, and Grayson from Robert Goddard. Miss Dupre is here, the wonderful coach, uh, the team of Robert Goddard. And they had the principal, Miss Womack, and the vice principal, Miss Compton, there from Robert Goddard. And I think we've got everybody there. And all I have to do is, I, I, what I want to say is, uh, Thank you all for doing this. You didn't have to. As I was saying earlier, it takes some courage to do this, to go in front and sit there in your room all by yourself and answer questions from someone who is using big words that many of you have never heard of. But you acquitted yourself beautifully, and I'm proud of you, and I thank you. All right, everybody, let's say goodbye to the audience at home. Let's give them all a big wave. Goodbye, everybody. I'm Dave Zarin. We'll see you next time.